Before we begin today's episode of Potterless, I have two very special announcements. First, I will be featured in someone else's podcast. The Seattle Files is a podcast by my friend Chris Allen, where he discusses Seattle local history with improv and stand-up comedians in the Seattle community. Tomorrow, an episode will drop where the two of us discuss the history of this guy who lived in the woods and fought people off. It literally sounds like an action movie, but it really happened in real life. It's fantastic and drops tomorrow. So just search The Seattle Files on any podcasting app and you'll find it. Secondly, we reached our goal on Patreon, which means shirts. So there's gonna be two new tiers on Potterless's Patreon page. There will be a $2 tier, where I send out stickers to people, and there will be a $10 tier where you get a shirt. So that will take a little bit of time for the stickers to get designed and come in, for the shirts to get designed and come in, but in the very near future, there will be new tiers on Potterless, where if you pledge to that, you'll get new stuff. So you can either update your pledge or start a new one if you aren't, or just not pledge. You don't have to give any money to this podcast, but if you want to, that's great. And I put all the money back into it for things like audio equipment and other editing software and stuff to make the podcast better. But yes, the plan is to have the $10 tier get you a shirt and then also once a month do like a live Q&A stream where throughout the month you can email in questions and stuff like that and then I will answer all of them during a live stream. You can ask behind the scenes stuff or just random questions, whatever. Or during the live stream, you can ask any questions that you have. So very excited about that. So feel free to follow us on all the social media to see the what the shirts look like and when they're live and all kind of stuff like that. But I'm just very very excited to make progress there. And of course, thanks to our newest Patreon supporters. So first, a special shout out by James Kaneos, who dedicates his shout out to his three year anniversary with his girlfriend, Lindsay Battelle. Happy anniversary to James and Lindsay. And a huge shout out to our newest producer level patrons. Emily Wiffen has upgraded to be a producer. Andreas Ozelby is back as a producer. And Chandra Cruz is a new producer. So thank you guys all so much for making this podcast exist. And obviously, continual thanks to our already existing producer level patrons, Leanne Davis, Griffin, Meckelberg, Aaron Johnson, Erica and Calvin Bauer, Michael Vanderslice, and Sadie Bear. These humans are all fantastic and they never forget any of the words to their favorite songs when they're singing along. So without further ado, I will get into this episode of Potterless starring Sydney Adams covering the last and final chapters of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. <laughs> Internet to Potterless, the tale of a grown man reading a series of children's novels for the first time. My name is Mike Schubert. I am joined again by Sydney Adams, aka Sydney Rachel, aka prostitute, but not anymore. <laughs> that part of me's dead. <laughs> That's dead. It's just a black square <laughs> with a white V in the middle of it because it's not even green. That V is not even for virgin. Uh, I've I think I've opened the Vine camera app one time. Yeah, I know too. Like, this shit really is dumb. Sad. I was like, <laughs> maybe too sad. So we're gonna discuss chapters 34 through 37, aka the last chapters of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Sydney, how are you feeling about Um it? great. I like that you're acting like we didn't just end the first half of this from yep. the other episode and then we just we immediately started recording. It, it is time. currently 649. We stopped recording <laughs> the other one at 647. I like that so. it's like a whole different thing. Like we came back on a different hey, thing. You know. Nope. Still in my bathroom. <laughs> nope. Still here. Still, still doing a thing. Still doing a thing. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. All right. But yeah, let's get right into it. Chapter 34, Priori Incantatem. And I was like, oh, shit. Latin. Something about to go down. I took Latin. Did you really? Yeah, I took three years of Latin in high school. Ugh. So good. Super useful. I went to Latin conventions. It was dope. No, I did it because I... Because you're insufferable? Well, <laughs> that too. But I grew up in New Jersey, and we had Spanish class once a week in middle school. Okay. And then I moved to Texas, and that's like... AP Spanish because it's like actually useful to learn it there. Right. Uh, yeah. So when I was going into high school, I was like, I'm going to die if I try to take Spanish. So at that point, I was like, all right, my other options are Latin and French. And I was like, France, I'll never live there. I lived right. there for six months before. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, might as well take Latin. That'll be the most useful. It like kind of helped with my English on the SATs a little. And that was it. Yeah. I was like, you can just figure out big words that you're unsure of and if, if they were close the to Latin. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, but. It was a good time. It's better than us. Like, in elementary school, our elementary school taught us Japanese. Wait, that's kind of um, dope, though. I would like to remind everyone that I live less than an hour from the California-Mexico border. So <laughs> we took Japanese, because clearly Naturally. that's the most useful. Yeah, but the, like they made the whole elementary school do it. And I was like, this is kind of cool, but yeah. also, when am I going to use this? Same thing. Been to Japan twice. Hey! <laughs> 
<laughs> so <laughs> let's get into it. So priori in cantatum is Latin for song from before. And I was oh, like, damn. And I was you like, figured that out. I had to look it up. But I knew priori meant from before. And I was like, in cantatum, don't know what it is. It's song. Damn. I would have never even thought to look that up. I was like, this is some shit J.K. Rowling knew. <laughs> All of the English language. I was lucky that the first time she did like a spell, it was very easy Latin. And then I was like, yeah. is everything Latin? And I had Julia Shafini on the podcast before. And she's like, yeah, like a bunch of Latin. I was like, yes, time to feast. You're like, uh, am I? You're like, this is useful. So now it's okay. finally, finally coming useful finally useful yeah like eight years after i learned it on Yonk. this podcast <laughs> <laughs> that is world renowned at this point i hope hey man time's not real it's a construct so true you, it's oh, useful so true okay. anyway anyway the book so I, I wrote this is latin for song from before i'm sure this will make more sense halfway through the chapter since that's when all of the titles are revealed like halfway right, through the yeah. chapter they're like this is what it means and then three quarters of the way through they're like this is what that little drawing in well, the book come is come on i would hate it if the chapter title was like voldemort comes back and you're like god damn it you ruined it <laughs> yeah that would be true leave something to mystery shoops they do a good job of like not spoiling stuff in the chapter titles but i will say when i read the book i make sure that i never look at the table of contents because i don't want to know anything i'm so opposed to spoilers i don't want to see anything at all i used to be a little jerk i would read the last page of the book wow nothing else just the last page no other context just like whatever the last page was and then i'd like try and guess everything throughout the book ah, um, well so far like, the last like, pages haven't been that great i know right they're like mm, hermione figured it out anyway <laughs> yeah voldemort says that harry has to bow before they duel and right. Harry's like, Harry's like, fuck that. I'm not bowing to you. And then Voldemort goes like, bow. And it forces him to bow. It's like, geez, mm. Voldemort, calm um, down. And Harry wasn't being a gentleman. <laughs> not he being wasn't gentleman. following the dueling rules. Yeah, obviously. So then he's like, all right, now face me like a man. And then he goes, and now we duel. And like does a surprise thing and like hits him with an yeah. attack as he says go. So like this whole thing is about face fighting like, like a, a man <laughs> and honor. And then he's like, sneak attack, bitch. It's like, fuck you, Voldemort. Come on. Face me like a man, you 13-year-old boy. <laughs> it's too true. It's way too true. <laughs> yeah, and then he's like, fuck you. Anyway, <laughs> so, so use, right. his, use the little sneak attack. Uh, oh, I wrote in my notes, all caps, are you serious? You have to result to cheap shit. You are Satan. Give the kid a break. So right. the spells that he used was a Cruciatus curse again. Mm. And while he's doing it, then he stops. And then he's like, do you want me to stop, Harry? And then Harry doesn't say anything because he's a badass 13-year-old. Yeah, like, gonna... I let you take glory in this shit. Right? <laughs> so Voldemort hits him with Imperio. and But Harry, as we've seen before, resists it because he's yeah. a boss. He's yeah, so good. he's like, mm, nope, can't get me. Mm -mm. So Harry hide behind a headstone. While, <laughs> like, a, like a man. Like a pussy. Uh, while, like a man. <laughs> while, while Voldemort still talks smack. And then Harry's like, you know what? I'm not going to die like a coward. So he gets up and he tries to I'm use Expelliarmus. Like he is like, I'm going to die Sorry. like a man. <laughs> so he uses Expelliarmus. Voldemort uses Avada Kedavra. And I'm like, shouldn't Avada Kedavra like, be stronger? It shouldn't yeah. it be like, nope, one kills people, one makes your wand fly away. I wonder oh, which one is going to win. Tricky. <laughs> but nope. they're equal, apparently. So Only because the, the, the wands wand. have matching cores. Thank God. Mouth made from a phoenix feather. Mm -hmm. The same one. And then you find out that feather is important. So the spells oh. meet in midair, <laughs> and it causes each of their wands to shake and vibrate. Harry and Voldemort get lifted off the ground and then move, like, multiple yards. Oh. I was super pissed because this didn't happen in the movie. No, the movie's not. version of this duel blows. Because yeah. basically, I had seen the movie before reading this book. You jerk. I, I'm the worst human. You jagweed. It was in my sister's continual desire to try to get me to read these books is that she'd be like, come on, watch the movies. You'll like it. And I didn't like the okay, first three. And I loved plan. this one. Well, it was at this point where I was like, Megan, I'm not reading these books. And she like had to go to it. Gotta love my sister. Shout out to her. And shout out to her baby niece, who is not even a year old and is one of my Patreon supporters. Oh. It's so up? good. I, I got the little email that's already like having the financial funds to support your uncle. Yeah, I was like, damn, Meg, like she's got uh You're like more a successful two, than he'll ever be. I was gonna say she's got like more allowance than we ever had growing up. And then my sister and I had like an hour long text message conversation, like talking about how my our mother would not give us allowance but would like make us do chores in order to like be able to do stuff. It was yeah. a great trip down memory lane. <laughs> yeah, that's what we did too. Builds character. Yeah. So anyway, shout out to Meg. Shout out to moms, shout out to your sister, <laughs> shout out to your sister's baby. Anyway. <laughs> 
basically, I had seen the movie. I remember this duel being like not that cool. So then yeah. after I read this, I was like reading it. I was like, this is the coolest shit ever. So then I watched yeah, it on YouTube after I finished the book. It's so lame. It's so bad. It's like five seconds long. The ghost people that come out of the wand don't even look that cool. They're very quickly like, there's no dramatic thing. They just get out and right away, Harry's dad is like, run, run like a bitch. Get out of here. <laughs> like, we They blew all their budget on the first three tasks yep. for the movie. And uh. then they're like, oh, but we have this really climactic fight with Voldemort. Here's $12. <laughs> <laughs> I was super upset about it. They didn't get lifted off the ground, which I just really wanted to see the dynamic of how that worked. So mm-hmm. Voldemort yells at the Death Eaters. He's like, do nothing unless I command you. Like, I want to do this. This is my fight. <laughs> uh, but he's, you can tell that he is shocked at what is happening. Yeah. So Harry hears a Phoenix song, which at first you're like, what does this mean? Is revealed later. Yeah. So then a voice tells him not to give up. And you don't know what that is, but you learn later. So Harry's like, wand. No, Harry's schizophrenic. <laughs> yeah, Harry's a crazy person. Harry's wand starts shaking like crazy. And the the bead, which is the point at which the two spells are meeting, Mm -hmm. is moving closer and closer to Harry. Uh Uh-oh. And it gets, like, just up to his wand. And then Harry tries, like, super hard, and it slowly pushes it back, slowly but surely, all the way until it hits Voldemort's wand, which is... Yeah, through the power of concentration and suggestion. So good. So what happens is that his wand starts, like, sparking and all this crazy stuff. And basically, first, the ghost hand of Peter Pettigrew comes out. And you're like, whoa, that's kind of weird. spooky. Then a grayish head and torso of Hedrick comes out. And Cedric's like, hold on, Harry. And you're like, oh, shit. It's about to be like everyone that got murdered. So then Frank comes out. And Frank comes out and he's like, I guess he really was an evil wizard. It's like, Frank, not the time and place. (laughs) You're like, are you kidding me? You're just realizing this now. (laughs) So then Bertha Bertha comes out uh, and they all start like circling the duel. And then James Mm -hmm. Potter emerges. Yeah. And then Lily also comes out. So You're like what? And at first I was confused because it's like it's it gets explained that it's like uh, the ghosts that are coming out were the first to emerge were the most recent that he's killed. And so yeah, it makes sense. The ghost hand, and then uh, Peter Pettigrew, and then uh, Cedric Diggory, et cetera, et cetera. And, cause, but it's funny because only like five or six people come out, and I was like, wow, Voldemort hasn't really killed a lot of people. And then, I re- and then I remember that he's been, like, dead, half dead for, like, 13 years. <laughs> My similar thought to that was, like, why, how does the wand know to stop at the Potters? Like, the wand is just like, oh, okay, they're his parents. We're not going to, do- like, I'm sure he's killed hundreds of other people before the <laughs> I Potters. Know. I'm like, for the most powerful <laughs> wizard ever, you haven't really killed that many people. Like, ooh, career kill count only five? And then I was like, yeah. oh, no, but there was a ton before the Potters. Yeah, I just thought it was funny that it stopped at the thematic one that never. Yeah, they knew. Well, yeah, we don't need any more ghosts. <laughs> It'd be a ghost party if we had that one. Exactly. So Lily goes over and tells him to get to the port key. Uh, way better than in the movie where it's James. Lane. Ugh, come on. Ugh. So Cedric then is like, hey, by the way, can you bring my body back to my parents? <laughs> yeah. Hey, I know you're kind of busy right now, I know but you're I just busy have one more dying. favor. You kind of got me killed. Can you do this one thing for me? I know I'm much larger than you, but can you bring my body back to my parents? I know I'm an 18-year-old man, but... <laughs> Please. You. They just want some closure. So... <laughs> (laughs) Harry then pulls his wand away. The spirits close upon Voldemort so that he like can't see what's going on. Harry runs away, dodges some stun spells of the Death Eaters that are thrown his way, grabs mm-hmm. Cedric's body. With like a broken leg, mind you. Oh, feats of strength. Grabs the body, can't get to the portkey, so he accios it to him, snags it, mm-hmm. and gets out of there just before Voldemort <laughs> murks him. And it's chapter 35, oh! Veritaserum. Ooh. So. This is a crazy chapter. So many things happen, and in the movie, you know. sucked. You know. So bad. They did a lot of really great things, though. Yeah, like. They did a lot of things really well, so it's like, like they, cast. Yeah, they're doing they're doing fine. Anyway, right. they're doing fine. Moving on. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> Harry lands back confused and he's still shook about what went down. We all... Dumbledore is crouched over him. Fudge is also there, and everyone starts flipping out that Cedric is dead. Yeah. Fudge grabs him out of the crowd, but then when Harry is like fading in and out of consciousness. When he starts getting up the stairs, he realizes that Moody is taking him up the stairs. Ooh. And at this point, I finally realize it's not Ludo Bagman. Not that it not, isn't necessarily Ludo Bagman, but at this point, I thought, and you'll learn later that I was wrong, it was Fudge bringing him away, but then it turns into Moody. I was like, is it someone using Polyjuice Potion oh, to well, disguise themselves that? as Fudge? Well, yeah, but I guess it, but I was wrong because. Oh, okay. So you have guessed. Fudge it. actually is there, and then he like passes out, and then Moody actually does bring him back separately, but I thought it was mm-hmm. someone disguised as fudge brings him away and then it's moody so 
I was right, but for the wrong reasons. It's kind of like if you like do a math problem on a test and like you'd fuck it up, but you still get the right integral. And at the end of the day, it's like, well, I hope the teacher doesn't look at my work too well because yeah, I right, did it wrong. Right, right has the right, right integral. Totally <laughs> you know, happens all ma- the time. Uh, math stuff. <laughs> you know. That's the only thing I could think of where I had to like show my work. Anyway. We get it. You're smart. Uh, <laughs> God, pff, ugh, the worst. So all, all caps, I was like, wait, no. Is this polyjuice bullshit? Is it moody? Is it fudge? <laughs> what the fuck is happening? So moody gives Harry something to drink that makes him feel better and then moody starts asking about the details and he's way too specific he's like how did he treat the death eaters did he forgive them was he nice to them which is super yeah, suspect like, um i never said that i was back in Voldemort. <laughs> so harry then blurts out that there is a death eater here at hogwarts that facilitated all of this and moody's like that's crazy he's like, yeah but he's like he's like i know who the death eater is and harry's like oh is it karkarov and then moody's like uh karkarov fled once the tattoo got dark so yeah. that means I was correct in my guess of him being the scaredy cat one. Point one shoes. Right. And then Moody admits that he put Harry's name in the goblet. And Harry's like, no. And then Moody's like, yeah, I did. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the way you said that, it sounded like a guitar solo should be in the background. He's like, yes. <laughs> uh, Moody draws his wand on Harry. And Moody's like, I summoned the dark mark at the World Cup. Oh, what? And he's like, I hate Death Eaters that are free because that means they turned their back on Voldemort. Mm-hmm. He hates the people that like didn't get arrested. What does this mean? Yeah. Still didn't guess who it was. Moody reveals that he kept people who hated Harry away, had Hagrid show Harry the dragons, mm-hmm. taught him how to beat the dragons, mm-hmm. and all this other stuff. Told Cedric about the egg thing so that Cedric would then tell Harry. Says that yeah, I like even... that he also calls out like how nice Cedric is. He's like... Cedric's a really nice moron. Of course he was going <laughs> to share that info with you. It's so true. And then he's like, he even, the the magic plant book. First off, I like that the magic plant book is a plant. Yeah, right. There to at. Uh, so he planted the magic plant book in Neville so that Neville would tell him about Gillyweed, but then Neville didn't do it, so he had to do the whole Dobby thing. Mm-hmm. So he orchestrated it all with Dobby to make that go down. Moody stunned Fleur at the... Maze. He was one of the four teachers that's supposed to protect people. Mm-hmm. No. Nope. So that, so that, that creepy, that creepy dude was just inside the maze. Like, mm? yep, just chilling there. Shouldn't you be on the perimeter? Nope, I'm inside. Oh, so I'm inside. he did the thing to Fleur, and then Imperioed Crumb to make him do Crucio. So I'm very, I'm very glad that You're Crumb like, is not a bad guy. Relief. Like, like, Crumb's still an okay dude. That's okay. Harry is flabbergasted, as am I. I'm freaking out while I'm reading. That was a good chapter. twist. I am. Fr- I did not see this coming at all. I'm freaking out, especially because I think it's like actually Moody. I'm like, how is Moody a bad guy? Why would he be a bad guy? Like, this doesn't make sense. Like, it does make sense that it's Moody. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. Then Moody says, basically, oh, if I kill you, Voldemort's going to love me so much and he's going to make me so strong. Like, I got to kill you. He admits that he, like Voldemort, has the same name of his father and killed his father. And I was like, oh, no, because I'm starting to put it together. I was like, this is crouch, motherfucking bullshit. So this Harry, crouch, look at it. Harry then says, you're mad. And I was like, uh, yeah, he's Mad-Eye Moody. Boo. <laughs> Boo. Uh, Moody, <laughs> Moody is about to just murder Harry. But then mm-hmm. Harry uses Stupefy, which it's opens the door because he heard people coming behind. Yeah, he's so like, Dumbledore, save me. Mm-hmm. Dumbledore, McGonagall, and Snape are there. Dumbledore has like a cold fury in his face when he sees Moody. Mm-hmm. He is, You're like, this isn't, uh, this isn't normal Dumbledore. No, this is Dumbledore not, turned up to 11. Oh, yes. So... McGonagall wants to take Harry to the hospital wing and Dumbledore's like no Harry needs to understand what's going on (laughs) still super pissed and Harry is very confused because he's never seen Dumbledore like this yeah Dumbledore says that this isn't moody and he tells Snape to get the strongest truth serum that he possesses and to grab Winky as well Dumbledore then tells McGonagall to bring the boar hound and Dumbledore does some crazy ass lock shit to open up a trunk that's in Moody's office. Seven keys, seven trunks. Mm-hmm. So when he opens it, you see the real Moody inside with a bunch of his hair missing, as well as his peg leg is missing. That's some crazy. That was a crazy reveal. Absolutely ridiculous. And then Snape empties the hip flask that quote unquote Moody had to show that it's polyjuice potion. So I was like, oh shit, I was right, but. Kind of. Yeah. In a <laughs> so, different way. But I, but I did it. Hey, but, still um, got the right answer. Right answer, wrong word. <laughs> so the hair that is missing has got to be to keep making the potion. Mm-hmm. The potion eventually wears off, and it's revealed that the imposter is someone that Harry has seen before in the pensive. And I was like, oh, shit, it is Crouch's kid. And mm-hmm. then... Barney. And then Winky comes in and confirms that it's the kid. But before she does it, she keeps calling him, like, Master Crouch. And I was like, if it's Barty Crouch Sr., 
Mm-hmm. I would be so mad because he was the most obvious red herring the whole right, book. Right, right. For like five seconds, I was livid with You're J.K. Like, Rowling. No. I was like, no. And then you reveal that it's Barty Crouch Jr., which is infinitely better. Very cute. I don't think they said that his name was also Barty. No. So it totally threw me for a loop. Yeah. And it was nice. But I was still like kind of mad at J.K. I was like, oh, that's so crafty. But also, girl, how dare you? Girl. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, why you gotta do that? Why you gotta be like this? Oh, yeah, so Wiki confirms it's a kid, and then I wrote in parentheses, I am barely a genius. Because uh, I, like, got it right literally two barely lines before she said it. <laughs> so Snape comes back with the serum, which is the same one that he threatened Harry with. Serum. Mm-hmm. So he pours it in the mouth of Barty, and Dumbledore then starts just grilling him. The kid reveals that his mother's dying wish was to swap places with the kid via Polyjuice Potion, facilitated by Crouch Sr. Yeah, because he was an ask man, so she was like, I'm going to take his place. And I was like, mm, I can't decide if you're the best mom or the worst mom. Uh, the worst mom, since your son is evil. So yeah, Crouch she... then had... Uh, <laughs> so, Moral uh, dilemma. Anyway, so yeah, they, they do the switch thing where basically they like come to visit him. The, they switch places or whatever. She keeps taking Polyjuice Potions so she looks like him. He keeps taking it so he looks like her. My question was like, bear with me. High security mm-hmm. wizard prison. The highest yeah. security wizard prison. Mm-hmm. Where everyone's watching you, making sure you're not up to any crafty shit. There's dementors everywhere. How are you making Polyjuice Potion for right. like 15 years? A year. Oh, just kidding. Well, no, <laughs> a she, year. Yeah, the kid lasted a total of one yeah. year in the Because they say later you have to take it every hour on the hour. So, yeah. I mean, I know like in prisons they make like toilet wine and toilet alcohol. Was she just making like toilet polyjuice potion? <laughs> like, I don't know. Either that or she had a really big flask that she didn't ever have to make it again. Yeah, but I was like, why would they let her have her own personal like... I don't know. I'm just skeptical. No, this is oh, the same God. prison where Sirius Black, the most notorious criminal in the world, mm-hmm. quote unquote killed 13 people. They didn't check to see if he was an animagus at all. No. And then they just leave him in a room with bars spaced far enough apart where a dog can sneak out of it. Which could technically means a Which, human. Which, like, a human could have, too. Listen, this prison needs a reform. This is the worst run prison ever. I'm so stoked for it to get broken in book six, is what I'm guessing, is that everyone's getting the fuck out. And it's going to be some shit. But yeah, good, because no. it's a poorly run institution. Honestly, they deserve to break out if it's that Everything easy. is bad. Everything is so poorly run. The ministry is shit. Hogwarts is shit. <laughs> Government reform. (laughs) Ugh, God. Crouch basically had Winky nurse Crouch Jr. back to health and then hit him with an invisibility cloak all the time, used Imperio to try to keep him from not being evil. Mm -hmm. This makes sense about why Crouch Sr. was so adamant against people interrogating Winky at yeah. the World Cup. That's why yeah. he was like, no, 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 because then... And also, you can just be like, she's a house elf. Ignore her. Mm-hmm. Yep. So then he says that Bertha Jorkins found out by visiting the Crouch home once for a signature. Mm-hmm. And so Crouch had to hit her with, like, an intense memory charm, which already fucked up her brain, so that's why they to send her away, which is yeah. why they covered up her disappearance and her didn't really look into it. Because it was a house elf, so everyone was like, we don't care. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Winky... Well, also, it's just like he wanted to make sure no one found her and right. then figured out what was actually going down. Right. So... Winky talked Crouch into letting his kid go to the World Cup because that's like the only thing that he loved. Mm -hmm. So that explains the empty seat at the game as it was the kid sitting in the seat with the invisibility cloak. Also, how many invisibility cloaks are out there? So far, two. So far, two. And uh, I don't know where you get them. Or, or how you get them. Free. Amazon.com. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wizard, Amazon.wizard. Uh, Amazon.wiz. <laughs> Amazon.wiz. Um, while in the box, he broke through the imperious curse of Papa Crouch, stole mm-hmm. Harry Potter's wand out of the back of his pocket, and when the Death Eaters started acting a fool on their own volition, he summoned the Dark Mark. That's why it's on Harry's wand, mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Papa Crouch retrieved the stunned kid because when they did those spells into the forest, they hit him. So he stayed in the forest when the end yeah. brought out Winkley. So he was like, oh, shoot, I'm out. And then they were like, nope. And then he was like, had to find his son that was covered in an invisibility cloak. Kind <laughs> in of the forest. Like, so he's just kicking, stammering kicking around. Kicking everywhere. <laughs> So he's doing the stingray shuffle, but in the forest. The stingray shuffle. If you're from, <laughs> if you're from coastal towns, they teach you this thing. Oh, that's like how you check if stingrays are on the. Yeah, floor yeah, of the ocean? It, that's like a that's like a coastal town thing. Like if you if you live on the beach, like the lifeguards teach you when you're like a really little kid to do the stingray shuffle. So you just shuffle your feet in the sand when you're walking into the ocean, and that way they like it like wakes up all the stingrays and you don't get stung. And that way you don't accidentally like step on a stingray and then get a barb through your foot. So. True. Yeah, I thought this was just the lame version of the cupid shuffle which is already the lamest oh. dance ever 
Hey, um, uh, pardon me. Advance, advice to anyone. If you want to ruin a wedding, play the Cupid Shuffle. <laughs> uh, I think to differ. I work in the wedding industry. Whoa, wait, but why? White people why, love wait, that. Uh, well, uh, I mean... <laughs> why not play the cha-cha side is better because at least that guy's voice is fun but also like why don't you just play the wobble so it like get some real shit do you think they played this at the yule ball oh man maybe the wobble i oh the if wobble. they played the wobble the wait did you just say the wobble and then the wop yeah. Cause that's the oh have we have I don't know if we've ever discussed this, but that's like the one two punch I would do in college anytime you need to get a party <laughs> started. It's like oh people aren't dancing. It's like play the wobble and then the wop. Your party is saved. It worked every time. Every single time. Or you time. were too drunk to notice that everyone was like, God, uh, you invited the wobble and the wop. I didn't kid? drink God. until I turned twenty one. You were the only hey. you were the only one dancing <laughs> the wobble and the wop, and you were like, this party rules. <laughs> I didn't start drinking until I was twenty one, so I did made this call sober a ton. And had a lot of proof so that if I ever did make this call drunk, I knew that it probably worked even if I didn't remember. (laughs) All right. Whatever you say, Shoots. It's such a good one-two punch. What is better than the wobble and the wop? Uh. So Cupid. No, it is not. It's so bad. All you do is step to the left and then to the right and kick and cha-cha by yourself. Yeah, that's how I do my cardio. (laughs) I just do the Cupid shuffle to myself in my bathroom. (laughs) I'm imagining like with the little jazzer-sized dumbbells that don't weigh anything. <laughs> Ankle weights, dude. Oh, uh, true, 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 true. <laughs> oh man. So then, uh, little Crouch says that Voldemort and Wormtail broke him free from other Crouch. Voldemort tortured Bertha Jorkins until he broke through the memory charm. So he found out about Moody and the Triwizard Tournament, Crouch's kid, and all the stuff from that. So then mm-hmm. Voldemort kind of made his plan based off that. He used the Imperious Kirch on older Crouch to release his son, and then all the shit starts going down. Yeah. So that's why that whole moody thing of the whole trash bin situation, that was Wormtail mm-hmm. and Crouch's kid breaking in and kidnapping like, him for Polyjuice stuff, um, and then talking down Arthur Weasley and hitting him with a charm when he came to investigate. So then they locked Moody in his own trunk, kept him alive with Imperious Curse, used the hair for Polyjuice Potion, and studied his backstory so that he could, super sinister, like studied Moody's backstory so that he could act like him and know how he would act towards each individual person, like who to hate, who to like. Yeah. You got to respect how much work Barty Crouch Jr. put into this. Do I? I, I mean, it's like, I mean... It's super evil, but so thorough. Mm-hmm. That's like the most sinister thing in the book I've heard so far. Like, yeah, Voldemort killed a ton of people and like maybe possessed an animal or two, but they kidnapped a man. They kidnapped a man and, and then stole a, his barely identity. Kept a, barely, barely kept, kept him, alive. him alive and like studied stole it. his hair. Right. Oh, the, and only from one side. Like, didn't even like do it nicely. Like, come on, oh. give him just a nice haircut. Right. Give, yeah, give him a buzz cut at one time, put all his hair in a big bucket, and then just take out little pieces every now and then, right? Like what's... Just a bucket of hair. Mm, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, so then also, he stole the stuff from Snape's office, and since he's Barty Jr., that's why on the map, it looked like it was Barty Crouch Sr. Mm-hmm. Shouldn't the map know? Like, shouldn't the map say Barty Crouch Jr. on it? Right. Right. That's something you have to put on every government form when you're signing up. It says, like, do you have a prefix or a suffix? And you're like, I am Barty Crouch Jr. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And then, like, that should be on an official wizarding right. document, like the secret Marauders room. Exactly. And then in addition to that aspect of the map, that explains why Moody, quote unquote, was there to bail Harry out of the situation situation when Snape caught him crazy that if Snape had just caught him normally it actually would have helped <laughs> like because then because then Moody wouldn't have gotten the map yeah. to help him get his dad yeah, right Harry giving him the map was actually monumental you know, super not everything super works out map. so the crouch illness thing was all a bunch of bullshit he started to break free of the curse slowly the imperious curse so that's when he fled to Hogwarts and was freaking out but then Moody used the Marauder, Moody, quote unquote, but Crouch Jr. used the Marauder's map to know where he was and then set up the whole thing to like get the people to run away and then basically knocked out Crumb, took his dad mm. away and then fucking murders his father. Yeah, that's a logical. Kills his dad and then turns him into a giant bone. And buries it. <laughs> oh, it's so bad. You know, I mean, he's still giving him a proper burial, technically. <laughs> kills his dad i wrote what the fuck like 300 times in my notes um and then he says voldemort will reward him far beyond anyone's wildest dreams and that is the end of chapter 35 so chapter 36 the parting of the ways (laughs) (laughs) so dumbledore uses uh the rope spell 
I, I'm really enjoying those. Same one. Spells. Twice in one book. Loving it. Mm -hmm. So he uses the rope spell to tie up Barty Crouch Jr. So Dumbledore basically is like, Harry, come with me to my office. Sirius is there. Harry asks, where are the Diggories? And Dumbledore is like, don't worry, they're with Sprout, who is the head of Hufflepuff. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the first time they mention who the head of Hufflepuff house is. Um, pro but it's possibly. Professor Sprout. Yeah. And of course it would be like the lamest professor, like the plant teacher whose last name is about plants and we don't know anything about her Listen, at all. Listen, Polly Sprout, I, she's great. I just like the fanfic where uh, her and Professor Hooch are a lesbian couple. I think that's great. <gasps> Stop. Is that, a, is that a fanfic? I think it is. I'm about it. I'm about it. I had On episode two with Charlotte, she mentioned that and I was like, this is so good. <laughs> Hooch and Sprout, such a great like couple name. Hooch and Sprout, Sprout and Hooch. Spooch. Sprooch. <laughs> Sprooch. Dude, Sprooch is their celebrity couple names. Uh, way better than Benefit. It doesn't appear that any of these professors are like married. They've kind of just devoted their the lives magic. to teaching like bratty children how poorly to run like, school. navigate their own abilities. <laughs> a very poorly run school. Oh so, yeah, I wonder what the dating scene's like for older oh wizards. Oh my god, I would love it. Because clearly, like, they got married. They abide to those weird, like, societal mm -hmm. rules. Like, James and Lily Potter were married True. and stuff like that. But none of the none of the professors are, uh, are hitched. I want to know more. I want to know more. Oh, man. Write more books, J.K. Has J.K. Rowling heard your podcast or does she know uh, it? Not yet. And whenever she does, she's going to be so mad at me. <laughs> we, should, we should tag her in everything. I, I try. I've tagged her on Twitter in a couple stuff. Cause she loves that girl loves Twitter. She does. She loves sassing people on Twitter. So maybe we'll She's connect got on that fingers. level. Twitter yeah. fingers. I. She does. My like magical dream world scenario is that somehow this gets to her. And then she's... I'm sure it uh, will. She's got assistants and stuff who, like, look for stuff like that, I'm it sure. It was so good. It was so good. I would love Actually, that. I don't know. She's pretty normal. She, she... she Didn't she, like, lose her spot on the Forbes list of most rich people because she donated so much of her money? Oh, wow. That's a dope I think that was like it. a. I think I think that was a story that is actually That's true. That's so cool. Prop to JK. Like so, I don't know if she's got all them like fancy assistants, but yeah, probably has she's some. keeping an eye out. So we'll uh, anyway, uh, they go to the Dumbledore's office. Um, Dumbledore tells Sirius what happens or what had happened and all the mm -hmm. moody stuff. Fox flies in. Then Dumbledore asks Harry what happened uh, at the creepy place where he got teleported He's to. like, yo, I know you just went through this really traumatic thing, but let's talk about it at length. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and basically Sirius and Harry are like, uh, can't I rest right now? And then Dumbledore's like, look, if I if you chill out and get over it and then I ask you about it again, it's going to be way worse. So you might as well just like mm -hmm. tell me everything while it's fresh in your brain and shit sucks so you don't have to relive it again. And then, and then he's like, all right, true. Makes sense. True, true. So he starts describing the fight and Sirius asks, why would the wands connect on the spells and Dumbledore says great question Sirius <laughs> Dumbledore says priori and cantatum and my first note is of like well, that, was, that was much longer than half of a chapter <laughs> usually the titles are revealed halfway through yeah. it is apparently the reverse spell effect so song from before spell from before it makes sense mm -hmm. so that happens because Harry's wand and Voldemort's wand have the same core the feather of a phoenix hence why phoenix music was playing while the attack was going down and then you learn not only is it just a phoenix it's fox which is yo ridiculous is a fox just a series of like different birds or is does he is he reborn as fox every time oh i guess he's i, I would assume he's reborn as fox every time yeah you're right you're true okay trope, phoenix trope. Is, yeah, true. <laughs> so when these ones face off they won't work properly against one another but if the holders force them to duel one will make the other regurgitate the spells that has performed in reverse explaining what happened Aha. we've made fun of how it stopped at the potters right but why does it only show the people that he killed why doesn't it show the people that he like crucio or imperio or, or like did, yeah, a, yeah. did an embarrassing thing like i don't know shave my pubes spell or like something like, okay <laughs> let's okay <laughs> that's gotta be a spell but right Come on. <laughs> um, because then we'd have more superfluous characters like Ludo. Oh, no, no, Ludo. <laughs> She'd just have to keep naming people who came out of the wall. And she's like, God damn it, I can't think of another name. That's why this one's called Ludo Bag. <laughs> no, I'm so sad. I thought it was him. Uh, I have another theory about Fox. Yeah, what's up? So essentially, he's getting reborn each time. Mm. So if he doesn't like his shitty life, he can just restart it <laughs> at the beginning. But does he remember? Does does he remember that he's Fox? Is it some weird thing where you can't remember your like previous oh, lives wow. if you're reincarnated? And all I'm picturing is just a death and lit and life circle to mad world. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, he just keeps being disappointed, so he keeps lighting himself on fire and keeps getting reborn. Oh, wow. And it's like, 
All around in my familiar face. <laughs> oh my god. I didn't think I wanted a Fox spin off movie, but now I do so. I badly. need it. <laughs> I need it. Oh man. Anyway. Fox, speaking of, uh, then cries on Harry's wound. What a bro mm. to heal it. You know, men can cry and heal your wound. Harry heads to the hospital wing. The squad and the other Weasels are there. Dumbledore's like, hey, don't question him unless he wants to say stuff like, let him rest. And he yeah. says that they're all welcome to stay overnight. And I was like, are you sure about that, Dumbledore? Because Madame Pomfrey kicks everybody else the fuck out when they try to stay overnight. Yeah, like, she's like, I don't know what you, you thought, but... This is my hospital wing. You get to hell out. Like, you get out. Harry then just falls asleep out of exhaustion. He wakes, and then he overhears McGonagall and Fudge kind of arguing before they enter the hospital wing. Mm -hmm. Turns out that the argument is centered around Fudge bringing in a Dementor while he interrogated Barty Jr. And the Dementor did the Dementor kiss... And now you can't know all of the finer details. You killed the key witness, idiot. And then Fudge is like, but we know everything. And then Dumbledore's like, yeah, but, like, like, but what about some more details, you dumb simpleton? He's like, oops, I'm sorry. I'm the worst person. Dumbledore suggests removing the Dementors and reaching out to the Giants to apologize, which is super smart based on what Voldemort said that their entire plan is to, A, get those two groups of people back on their side. And Fudge is like, no, we could never do that. It's like, ugh. And you're like, ugh. You're so dumb. You're like, so why dumb. Must you be Insufferable. Dumbledore is then, you know what, fine. You do what you see fit. I'm going to do what I see fit. You're like, okay, minister. <laughs> and this is why the chapter is called The Parting of the Ways. Snape then shows his dark mark tattoo to Fudge to prove it. And Fudge still doesn't believe it. Like, Fudge refused to believe Voldemort's back. He's like, he can't be back. There's no way he's back. It's like, no, this undeniable, this undeniable proof that he's back that was tattooed under your arm. It's got to be fake. Yeah, so Fudge is just awful and says that he's determined to keep everything under wraps and he leaves and when he does it he drops off Harry's winnings which is a thousand gold galleons which the <laughs> internet tells me is seven thousand three hundred fifty four dollars uh, oh jeez <laughs> is that the conversion rate yep oh god and then Harry's like I don't want that shit it should be Cedric's and he feels super guilty because he's like I told Cedric to grab the cup like really I could have just grabbed it and then yeah there's no Cedric death Blah, blah, blah. Um, and Mrs. Weasley's being very motherly during this whole thing, putting him at ease, telling him it's not his fault. Super awesome. Girls? Super awesome chapter for Molly. See, now she's going to move up in your favorites list. I mean, she's getting up there. And that's the end of chapter 36. And now we get into chapter 37, which is called The Beginning, even though it's the last chapter the of the end. book. Oh, what? Great. Jimmy, I see what you did there. You're trying to subvert my expectations. But guess what? I know that there's more books. <laughs> True. You can't fool me. I'm an adult. <laughs> I'm a 25 year old adult that didn't start reading these books until last year. <laughs> I'm 23. I read them when I was 11, but whatever. Whatever. <laughs> so it's one month later, and Harry has met with the Diggories, and they're like kind of at peace at this point. They also refuse the gold. They're like, no, we don't want that either. Which makes sense, because wouldn't it be like super weird if every time they think about how they made a couple extra thousand bucks, they're like, oh, right, because our son died. Yeah, so smart move on them to not take it. Money can't buy your dead son. <laughs> oh, too real. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> That's going to be the next Potterless t-shirt. Money can't get you your dead son back. <laughs> Even though it's about a fictional character. <laughs> Dumbledore tells the students, yo, don't bother Harry. Like, please just leave him be. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Weasley asked Dumbledore, apparently, to let Harry Potter go straight to their house this summer. Yeah, because he's like, how about you don't go home to your abusive family? Yeah, but Dumbledore says, like, he's got to stop by the Dursleys first, but he doesn't say why. Classic Dumbledore. Oh, classic Dumbledore. There's for good reason, but we just don't know why. So squad, squad meetups with Hagrid. He kind of puts Harry at ease just kind of talks him down, says, you know, how awesome it was, what he did, and he did the best he could, and, you know, it's so impressive, all the stuff you did, blah, blah, blah. And it starts mm -hmm. to make Harry feel better, which is great. Mm -hmm. Hagrid has been given a secret job by Dumbledore, and Madame Maxime is to join him, because now they're on good terms. They're like a couple. It's super cute. Couple of giants. Oh, zing. <laughs> <laughs> zing. So Harry's like, oh, does it have to do with Voldemort? And then Hagrid, like, tries to hide it at first, and then he's like, yeah, because Hagrid has no poker face. He's like, well, <laughs> who? Voldemort who? Voldemort who? Who's who? that? What? I don't know what to talk about. <laughs> Bish way? Away? So, <laughs> so then at the leaving feast which I think is the first time is that they called it the Leaving Feast. Harry wonders what Dumbledore had Snape do that night that Voldemort returned when he sent him away. Mm -hmm. The whole place is set up with black curtains in respect 
for Cedric. So basically like a semi-funeral type deal. Because normally it's a big gloat fest for whoever won the House Cup. Exactly. But. And they would be normal, like normal circumstances would be like praising the crap out of Cedric and Harry. and Huff- Gryffindor. Yeah, Gryffindor and Hufflepuff. And Hufflepuff would finally have something to cheer about. If for the first time in centuries. <laughs> but no, Cedric had to die tainting the only good thing that's happened to them in in millennia. So they won a, a regular season Quidditch match. <laughs> yeah, that's like, oh, well, that's still the best thing that ever happened to us. We won a regular season game against Harry. You're Potter. like, you know what? We did, we did our you best. Know what? We're good seekers and we're loyal and our dorm is close to the food court. So it's all good. What's up? <laughs> what Other. <are> you? <laughs> Other. Other. I feel so bad for them. Nah. Shout out to Hufflepuff. Shout out. Shout out to all the Hufflepuffs Shout out. listening. Uh, What's up? <laughs> Dumbledore starts to give like a pseudo eulogy thing about Cedric. And he says, this is another thing where he shits on Hufflepuff. He, quote, he exhibited the true spirit of Hufflepuff. By being a good and loyal friend, a hard worker, and a valuer of fair play. (laughs) So. I know. I was uh, like, that's not. (laughs) They're nice friends. They work hard. And they listen to rules. Hufflepuff house. they play by the rules. (laughs) Like, ugh. So disappointing. Oh, my God. JK is so mean to the people that she created. I know, right? (laughs) So then Dumbledore tells them the truth about what happened. He's like, out of respect, and so you guys know what's going on. I'm going to tell you what's happening. And he admits, he's like, the ministry doesn't want me to do this. Some of your parents are not going to want me to do this, but... I personally believe that truth is always better than lies. As we've mm-hmm. said before, like always be honest with everyone. Otherwise that's how you birth Voldemort. So just be honest with everyone. So he tells him exactly what happened and everyone is like super shocked. Of course, except for Crab Goyle and Malfoy. Yeah. They're, Cause they're like, Oh, what? We, didn't we had know. no idea. I mean, what? Crazy. Dumbledore gives a toast to Cedric, raises a glass and everyone like mumbles Cedric in solidarity. Mm-hmm. And then he also does one for Harry for, you know, being a boss, fighting Voldemort, getting out of their lives, bringing Cedric's body back, all this other stuff. And then everyone else who usually like roughly half the school hates Harry. Yeah. Everyone is like to Harry, uh, except for Crab Goyle and Malfoy. Right, because Slytherin. It's them and then a bunch of the Slytherins. And it's like, can't you guys. Would it kill you? To yeah. Like, would it kill you just to like half ass do it and just be appreciative of what Harry did and like feel bad for it's like so insensitive that some of these Slytherins have such a gripe with Harry that they're like no fuck you Harry well it's like Ugh. it's just all Malfoy's fault mm-hmm. Malfoy like runs that as a little as like a punk uh, like pseudo I don't know are they third years they're third years at this point or fourth uh, years fourth years like they're just a punk fourth year yeah like it's just commandeered the house he has so much pull because his dad is rich it's like ugh get over it <laughs> we get so, it ugh. so he calls basically for all the wizards to be united mentioning uh, about like Durmstrang, Bobaton, everyone should kind of like get together because we need mm-hmm. to unite against Voldemort. And then he gives a great quote right. where he says, many of your families have been torn asunder, which I just think torn asunder is a great phrase a good that line. should come back. <laughs> I need to make sure I'm fully aware of what its definition means before I start using it. But torn mm-hmm. asunder sounds dope. It's, it's a good one. Yeah, so at- <laughs> very Dumbledore. <laughs> very Dumbledore. So they're, they're starting to leave. They're all going like back. It's the end of the year. Fleur comes up and gives like a very sweet goodbye in her broken French. Says she's going to get a, try to get a job in England so that she can learn English. Super cute of Fleur. Super cute. So nice of her. Crumb also comes back, you know, talks to her for a little bit, takes Hermione aside to talk to her, and Ron gets like really jealous. She's like, that's my girlfriend, but not yet. <laughs> and then he comes back, and then it says that Ron, quote, ask, finally asked for Crumb's autograph after a deep internal struggle. Also, how creepy is Crumb? How old's Hermione? He, she's 13? Yeah, he's 18. How old's Crumb? Is he 18? Mm-hmm. That's illegal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> super weird that's illegal though. It is yeah that's yeah that's weird i didn't want to say it, but that's illegal it. though yeah not ooh, ooh, mm, fun stuff mm, harry, to potter. Think about. <laughs> harry potter and the well oh, this is gonna be bad but harry potter and the, the statue uh, <laughs> oh no <laughs> that would be victor crumb and the statue victor yeah case. victor crumb and the you shouldn't be doing that's his spinoff book <laughs> so let's see on the train ride home hermione pulls out a daily prophet which doesn't even mention mention cedric's death or harry or all this other stuff all it mentions is that harry won the tribes tournament because the ministry's on full hush hush mode which is super dumb political cover-ups mm-hmm. yeah. super you. messed up Hermione then reveals that Rita Skeeter won't be writing any more pieces because she has dirt on Skeeter. And Harry and Ron are like, what? So Hermione finally reveals that she found out that Skeeter is an unregistered animagus who can turn into a beetle. So Harry and Ron suggesting that 
A, it's bugging, and then B, Harry thinking that bugging literally meant bugs, he was right. Three, and her last name is Skeeter. That's a mosquito mm-hmm. bug. Boom. Anyway. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. And then Hermione, like, digs her out of her purse and is like, here, I have this mason jar with this woman who I trapped. <laughs> and guess what? I also put a spell on this mason jar so she can't um, turn into a human inside this mason jar. So Hermione kidnaps someone is is uh, essentially what but happened. But in and... Hermione's defense, she put a twig and a couple leaves in there. Yeah, right. Made it nice and cozy for her. <laughs> Uh, but like me stumbling to the right answer of polyjuice potion, Harry stumbled upon the answer of bugging being the answer, which I have so much in common go. with Lots Harry of glue. Lots of subtle clues <laughs> in this one. So Hermione, like you said, has her trapped in a jar with a spell on it that she can't break free and basically said to Skeeter, like, you can't write an article for a year. Otherwise, I'll spill the beans that you're an unregistered at a magus and then you're going to get put in Azkaban. So. That sounds like a very harsh uh, punishment. Yeah. Super intense, but hey. Kind of like nonviolent drug crimes. Um, anyway. Uh, <laughs> ooh, sorry, did I get political? Uh, it's fine. I live in Seattle. You live in California. <laughs> I know, right? Anyway. We're chill. <laughs> oh, man. So let's see. Don't so, uh, crab going on mouth. So well, away, before that, they uh, then they start like oh. realizing all the beetle stuff, and they're like, mm-hmm. "Oh, the beetle was in my hair at the uh, like Crumb pulled a beetle out of my right. hair." At the second task, and Harry's like, "Oh yeah, I saw a beetle on the statue with the whole map thing." And then they realize the Malfoy hand talking thing was which looked like a walkie talkie. Him talking, was him to, talking Rita. to Rita. So like they put it all <gasps> together. It all comes together. Super solid. This book almost makes me want to reread it. To, since there's mm-hmm. so many little things and a big thing yeah. that I didn't realize until I was editing an episode of Potterless after I'd finished the book was like when they go over the unforgivable curses at first yeah. and Neville very timidly raises his hand and say Crucio that shit is so deep because his oh, parents yeah. went that's crazy like, because of it like that's so crazy oh holy cow I didn't even realize right? that. that is a deep so plant. intense damn think of what had to go through Neville's body when he had to raise his mm-hmm. hand and give that answer. Mm-hmm. Ugh. I feel so bad for Neville. I'm really excited to see the theory that develops that he's the chosen one. I really want to see how that happens. Because so far I'm not seeing it. But I want to. But I want to. I want to. <laughs> seeing is believing. I want to believe. So the walkie-talkie thing. Talks about the jar. Says he, she's going to release her in London. And then she's just not allowed to write articles for a year. And then everything will be fine. Mm-hmm. Malfoy, Crab, and Goyle come in. And they start talking shit. And praising they're Voldemort. Like, why are you so obsessed with me? Go away. Uh, yeah, they go in and they're like, we told you you should have picked your side. Lord Voldemort will rule the world. Like, serves you right for blah, blah, blah. And the squad, in addition to Fred and George, who are down the hallway, all do hexes at the same time. And it's like yeah. this weird combination where, like, someone used jelly legs and all this other stuff. And all they, they say that everyone looks rough. And the only detail that they give is that one of the three has a bunch of, like, tentacles, tentacles spreading out of his out face. Of his face. And that was like, oh was my. Like, that's messed oh. up. I don't know. I don't think they did this in the movie, but like they should have because that's amazing. They definitely did not. Oh, that would have been that. so good. So they they leave them in that little room. And then the squad asks friend George, like, yo, who are you blackmailing? And here's where we learn about Ludo Bagman's role in this oh, what? book. His incredibly insignificant role in. But here we go. Uh, here it is. It's been a build up. Uh, so they say that Ludo Bagman is the one that they were blackmailing because he paid them in leprechaun gold during their very suspicious bet at the World Cup. They tried to write to him nicely at first, be like, hey, just in case you didn't know, like you gave us leprechaun gold, it disappeared, we would like our money. And then he would refuse to give them the money. So then it got nasty and they were writing angry letters back and forth. So it turns out that he made a similar bet to Lee Jordan's dad and lost money and didn't pay them. Uh Uh-oh. So basically, Ludo Bagman is like crazy in debt. He was like a gambling nut, so he's basically Michael Jordan. And he owed the goblins a ton of money, which is why in, uh, in, uh, what's the place where you drink butterbeer? Uh, Hogsmeade. (laughs) Hogsmeade. Yeah, well, no, it was, it was outside the three broomsticks at Hogsmeade. That's why he was surrounded by the goblins and they were like talking to him angrily because he owed them a bunch of money. Well, to try to... money, bitch? Exactly. exactly. These tiny men are like intimidating him for money. Yo, those goblins are scary. I don't know what you're talking about. So creepy. I was at the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Those motherfuckers are scary. I was like, let's not hang out. I haven't even read all the books. I, hey, and I've been twice, so... That should have been like a, that should have been like an end of the podcast pilgrimage. Oh, I want to do that. 
I want to go back after I finish it and be like, I know everything now and just see. How wait, I want to go. Wait, can I go? Can we get all the podcast guests to go? Let's do it. Oh my God. Uh, well, when <laughs> I get so signed fun. by NPR and uh, like, and uh, Sarah Koenig is my boss and I'm, and I'm a millionaire, I'll bring everyone. It's definitely going to oh, happen. Oh, totally going to happen. Come on. Yo, uh, Ira Glass, hit a boy up. Uh, so <laughs> act one. Yeah, act one. Harry Potter. Scene one. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. <laughs> So what he was trying to do to get out of this debt was he put a giant bet on Harry Potter to win the Triwizard Tournament, and that explains why he wanted Harry to win so badly, not because he was trying to get Harry Potter killed, but because he was trying to get himself out of debt. Out of debt. Ugh. And then we'd never hear never about, hear about him, him again. Never hear about him again. He's not in a movie. No one gives a shit. Uh, that is why people... You know, he probably got killed by the Goblin Mob. Uh, the, yeah, they just said he like, ran away. They don't know where he is. And so he's like, you know, in exile. And not the happy like Tim Robbins from Shawshank exile. Like a bad exile. No, no. Goblin's gone. Harry then gives Fred and George his winnings. He's like, I don't want this gold. Take it. But don't tell anyone how you got it. Invest it in your joke shop. Like, you guys deserve to do that. Because they they basically said that they were like all of their life savings was gone because they bet their entire life savings. Yeah, because they game. bet all that money on the quiz exactly. Shop. So um, Ireland to win the yeah. Cannon. So Harry's like, take this, start the joke shop. Uh, don't say how you got it. And then his last thing is like, oh, and also buy Ron some new robes, some new dress robes. Say they're from you because he yeah, because they're ugly. <laughs> And that's that. The final thing that happens, like he gets picked up by Vernon at the train station and Harry's like feeling optimistic. This might suck for a little bit, but at the end of the day, I'm going to hang out with the Weasleys like halfway through the summer. There's a reason that Dumbledore wants me to start here. I'm going to be fine. Life is good. Totally ignoring the fact that Voldemort is back. He's like not worried at all. He's like, everything's great. Uh, no. Satan is back. He's like, but at least it's summer vacation. Uh, Harry, you fucking idiot. This is going to be the best summer ever. (laughs) Oh, it's going to be so good. Freeze frame. And that's the end of chapter 37. And that's the end of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Sydney, how's everything? How are you feeling? How I'm feeling great. Okay, I do too. I'm feeling great. I'm uh, I'm currently looking at the cover art of the Goblet of Fire. Oh, what is the cover art? Because um, I my book, which I'm showing you here, which oh uh, yeah, here, can you okay, see so it? It's, so uh, it's we're skyping for those yeah. of you at home who are just tuning yeah. in for the end of the podcast. <laughs> you sick fucks. Um, the That's it's Harry it's Harry Potter holding uh, the golden okay. egg and brandishing his wand. Uh-huh. Fleur de la oh, Cora looking okay. um like a sassy French mm-hmm. lady. Victor Crumb looking very That's crumb? Ah, Cedric Diggory. That doesn't look very yeah. crummy. Cedric Diggory just looking like confused to be there. Yeah, he doesn't and look then very there's hot. a tiny black dog oh, underneath serious, Cedric. What up? That's serious black, but he's just kind of like, hey. hey, I'm here too. I'm here too, guys. That's cool. Hey, I'm here too. That's fun. Yeah. Cool. Oh, cool. I really like all the art for this I do books. too. I think they do. But good I job. like that like the art isn't officially canon because uh it puts the lightning bolt in the middle of his forehead and JK Rowling has like gone on record to say that it's supposed to be above his right eye, which is why the, yeah. the Potterless logo is the way it is. I researched it before I made the logo. I was like, where does the lightning oh. bolt go? Yeah. Yeah. So, wow, you did extensive research. Oh, so much. For a man, <laughs> for like, a man who does not care about Harry Potter. <laughs> I wanted the logo to be correct, all right? I didn't want people to be like, uh, well, actually, because everyone and their mom. Yeah, that's actually a good point. Everyone because and everyone their mom is... yelled at me when I messed up the Percy Weatherby thing, which is fine. And then everyone yelled at me when I said <laughs> when I said Bill had a lame job at a banker. And everyone's like, uh, actually, he's a curse breaker. Uh, I like that people correct me, but it was just funny that, like, a wave of people. You're learning so Well, you're learning more about the universe than I think is ever, like, fully stated sure yeah that's like, these thinking. are like these are de- these are details that are like made in passing and it's like the fact that people can retain all of those mm-hmm. is very impressive to me yeah and it shows because i don't think i care about anything that much <laughs> and like <laughs> it's it's just cool because there are so many like jk rowling worked so hard and these books are so impressive because she like i know we kind of talked about this on one of the first mm-hmm. episodes i did with you but like she made all of this up all the names yeah. all the spells all the Crazy. everything like and so i think it's cool that enough people have like i mean clearly hundreds of millions is that an overstatement no not at all no, like definitely not into it enough to like take care of these details i think that's cool yeah it's a uniting thing. it is good i like it and it's always fun yeah. but yeah, yeah speaking of fun this was fun thank you so much for being yeah. on here for these episodes india i had a blast Thanks, and a half geez. i'm glad that it's the exact opposite of our last episodes where nothing happened <laughs> and yeah because <laughs> last the most but eventful thing like, was like finding the, a diary I, last time because i be 
feel like the other ones were way funnier because there was like less to talk about. Yeah, so, so we, we were just, just it was tangenting like all hours. the time, and it was just a spitball and improv <laughs> jokes back and forth. And now we had to like actually talk about stuff. Ugh, the like, worst. Oh shoot, we have to hit the major plot points. Oh, we have to think about the thematic elements. <laughs> Ugh, but I like that our episodes are a yin and a yang. Nothing happening, and then fucking <laughs> everything happening. A yin and a yang. <laughs> oh man, but yeah, right. everyone, thank you so much for listening. If you want to find Sydney on social media, it's Sydney Rachel on Twitter and Instagram. Yeah. And, uh, I don't have Snapchat, Terry. Yeah. Oh, boo. Didn't you? Didn't you used to for a little? Have, or have you? Have you been sending me stuff? No, I. I no. I Oops. usually just throw stuff on my story. I'm. I'm just lazy. Uh, I just deleted. I deleted mine. I was like, I don't need yeah, this. Yeah, that's fine. It's valid. Super valid. Because <laughs> uh, now there's Instagram <laughs> stories and Facebook Messenger stories. If never if you guys ever it. make a Facebook story, stop. Just stop. No one wants to see it. It's so annoying. There's always like that there's one because it pops up. It pops up when you go to your like messages. Mm-hmm. Like and there's always like on one person. It's like one. There's always like it's that one person that you barely talk yeah. to in high school that you're friends with on Facebook. Just yeah, kind shout of out to Mira Chen who makes a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. she, there's no way she listens to this at all. There's no way. <laughs> oh, okay. Great. Well, your Facebook friends say so you post about it uh, there, so she might. Uh, maybe. Maybe. And this no. might be the time. Whatever. Mira, we had great times in college talking the like four career times we said hi to each other. It's chill. We were in the same dorm. We're basically best friends. Um, it's chill. We're best okay. friends. <laughs> <laughs> this is a joke. Oh, uh, yeah. We do this. Uh, but anyway, thank you so much. This was a, a blast and a half. And everyone listening, thank you. Thank you. Until next time, as they say in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. No, they don't. Wizard, wizard, wizard on. Wizard they off. say it. They say Wizard, wizard on. <laughs> wizard off. Uh, uh, All right. Never. Bye. Potterless was created by Mike Schubert, it is hosted by Mike Schubert, it is edited by Mike Schubert, it is produced by Mike Schubert, as well as Leanne Davis, Griffin, Melko Berg, Andreas Ozelby, Aaron Johnson, Erica and Calvin Bauer, Michael Vanderslay, Sadie Bear, Emily Whiffen, and Chandra Cruz, web designed by Kelly Beckman, and the music is by Bettina Campamanis. Thank you guys so much for listening. You can find us and subscribe to us on any of your preferred podcasting apps. You can find us at Twitter is at PotterlessPod, Facebook.com slash Potterless, Instagram.com slash PotterlessPod, and of course, our website, PotterlessPodcast.com. Thank you guys so much. And until next time, wizard on.